So uh, welcome again, everyone. Um, to those who have just joined us, my name is Kim, and I'm a learning designer and trainer at Open Learning Malaysia, right? With me today, I have Chandru, <laughs> learning designer and trainer. He will run today's session, okay, and answer any questions that you have. Now, as we proceed along this session, um, if you have any questions or clarification, please feel free to drop those into the Q&A box and we'll get back to you at the end of this session, okay? Right. Now, so everyone, um, this is actually the fourth session from the Open Crafts Basic Series, the fourth session. So previously, um, Chandru has been conducting a three workshop in the series, um, teaching and guiding uh, course creators such as yourselves, how to create an open cred course from scratch. Right. So uh, just to recap a little bit, right? Now in the first session, uh, Chandru explained about the open creds framework and its criteria, like the classification, the learning hours, and so forth. Uh, next, in the second session, Chandru showed how you can actually uh, plan an open creds course structure. And we have this interesting document, which is very useful. It's called the course design document. Yeah. And yeah. in the yeah. last <laughs> session, Right, in the third session, um, he showed step-by-step step how you can actually migrate and create content using open learning's authoring tools. So Chandru has been online a lot recently, teaching <laughs> a lot of stuff, which is great. Yeah. Um, now everyone, now if this is the first time that you're joining us, don't worry, okay? Um, you can still assess our previous sessions, contents, course materials, and video of recordings from our online uh, workshop course. Okay, you just need to you know, register and sign in. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to share the workshop course link uh, in the chat box. And please take two minutes to join the course now. Okay. Chandra, can you help me to drop the link in the chat box? Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Chandru. Oh, so Chandru okay. Said... I think I shared the arrow. <laughs> that's okay. Just All right. All right. Uh, that's the link. Yeah. So, everyone, um, please feel free to join this course. You only need an open, um, open learning account to join this course. Totally free course. Don't waste it. Uh, like Kim said, I have previously conducted three sessions from this series, three session, teaching people how to create open credit from scratch. What I mean open credit is a micro-credential course. It's a self-paced program. Uh, there's a recording there as well that you can access. So uh, please join the course. And this is actually the fourth session that we're gonna cover. So if you, you can still join this, no problem. You can still learn. And then after that, go back and cover the rest, uh, the previous one, all right? So uh, if you're facing any difficulty, I think um, you can post in the chat box. And we have a lovely and, and also very uh, talented uh, team uh, working in the back, uh, backstage that can uh, will definitely will help you, okay? So uh, uh, me and Kim, we are not alone. <laughs> we are surrounded by one of the best team in the world. <laughs> yes, you're supported by, by a very good team. Thank you so much to the team. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for supporting us. So everyone, uh, I hope uh, by now uh, you have a chance to join an online course. Maybe I'll just give a minute or two for them to join in and then we'll continue on, right? And if you encounter any technical problems, uh, please feel free uh, uh, let us know and uh, our team will be on hand to support you, all right? Okay. All right, by now, I hope everyone uh, have, uh, can assess this course. And yeah. I will now show you um, the screen of the course. I will share the screen, right? Yeah. OK. OK. So uh, you can see here, it's a screen share of how the course looks like. So we have uh, a few sessions here. and. Uh, Previously, Chandra has conducted the three workshops, which is here. So once you assess the online course, you can have access to all these valuable materials, right? Just at the pink clip, 
okay, uh, at the click of your fingers. And now we're in session four today, all right? So, um, so these are the topics that we're gonna cover in today's session. So I'll just put this on the side, all right? So if you click in, you will see there are various modules, right? I'll just, and these are the topics that we cover in today's session, all right? So um, to recap, in our previous workshops, we have looked at how to migrate your content into the open learning platform using our authoring tool, all right? Um, by now, some of you probably have an open prep course which is ready for launch, right? So what's next? What do we do next, right? So that's where this session comes in. So in this fourth session, Chandra is going to show you the steps on, number one, how to submit your open credit course for marketplace evaluation, right? Once you've done your course, then the next step is submitting it for marketplace evaluation. Also, he will, also, he will share the steps to configure a credible badges and certificates you, some of you probably will have heard about uh, a credible in an earlier session today, right? And finally, how to conduct pre-flight checks before setting your open credit course to live. Right. So on to you, Chandru. Take it away. <laughs> so I stop my screen sharing now. Hi, uh, hi. Thank you, Kim for the lovely introduction and also a wonderful opening. Uh, my name is Balasandra. <laughs> and also, yeah, you can call me Chandru. Uh, I'm a learning designer and trainer at Open Learning Malaysia. Um, okay, in this session, I'm going to focus on four important things. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, three important things. Uh, I have maybe four as a uh, surprise. <laughs> okay, the, I'm going to show you how to submit your open credit for marketplace evaluation. Okay, um, like Kim mentioned, we uh, did the recap just now. Uh, I already conducted three sessions before last time. And then um, in there, all the three sessions, I show people uh, what is the open credits framework, what is the criteria of open credit. Then I show them how to create a cost structure. And then, uh, then I should show them how to uh, create migrate the contents activity in the open learning platform using open learning authoring tools. And then pretty much most of the um, people I already have the contents ready. They probably already have open credits ready. If you knew, if you haven't done that part, it's okay. You can still access the material, do all the part and they still continue this workshop, okay? So no, no problem here. So, um, so here I'm gonna show a little bit about uh, three important things like how to submit your open credits. What I mean open credits here is actually a micro credential cost. So uh, every time when I say open credit, what is actually my credential cost? Because uh, I think um, my open credit is just uh, the way we uh, uh, refer to the micro credential. It's, it's an open learning brand of micro credential. So don't confuse uh, when I say open credit. What that means is simply a cost. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to submit your open credit, which is a cost to the marketplace. Uh, what is the steps you know you can do and and then um, after you've done that then how to configure the digital credential right uh, which is uh, one of the things is we call it here is a credible right so how to configure that remember uh, one of the things in micro credential important things micro credential is digital credential right so every time when people talk about micro credential only thing that come in the mind is badges certificate and all these things. So that's why this session is quite important and cover one of the most important part, how to configure the part. And uh, the third one is uh, then how to conduct a free flat uh, check, all right? Free flat check uh, before turning your open credits online. So you, uh, then your student can join. Lah. So free flat check means uh, there's, a, there's a thing that you need to do before you turn your open credits uh, online before you make your open credits, your course available for a student to join. Um, that, that process may sound simple, but the importance of the, the thing is, um, I can't even give measure to it. It's, uh, it's very, very important uh, because if you don't do that, if, because all your brands, your name is depend on it. Okay, you want to, if you want to uh, give a good product and product, you must do this. Uh, so, 
All right, so uh, without ado, uh, let's get start, uh, shall we? Uh, first, I'm going to open your workshop course, the one that I linked that I shared uh, earlier. All right, all right, let's open that. Okay, for the one that uh, already uh, joined the course, okay, um, or whatever I'm talking today, I put it there in the written form. Okay, so for now, you can what you can do is you can focus on the video here and you can focus on my voice. Um, then you can access the material later. Okay, uh, for the one who watching this from the mobile phone, anyone, anything, please bookmark the link and so you can access it later. All right, uh, save the link. All right, so you don't lose the link. Um, so the you you can access uh, late you can join the course later so no problem here all right i'm not uh, giving anyone uh it's not like you have to join but it's recommended if you join now um okay i'm going to open the same course that i'm gonna uh, yeah okay let me share my screen all right okay there you go all right, I hope everyone can see uh, my screen. All right, uh, so if you look at the, my screen is, uh, this is a course, your guide to open cracks. Uh, the one that uh, we talk, uh, 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 we just share the, we talk a lot lah in the session. So um, as uh, we Kim already say, as I also already say, I already conduct all the three session. Everything I talked in the last previous session, all the activities that, so what you can do is you can uh, join that and to redo again. Uh, you want to create a micro open crash or micro crash from scratch. This is a course for you. And even if you start, you can like uh, message us or you also can uh, message in the course itself. Lah. So uh, we currently focus on the session for today, all right? How to set up the credential. So this is a topic that we're gonna cover today, all right? Uh, so thank you, Kim, for the lovely recap. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to a little bit start with the thing called a marketplace, all right? So what is marketplace, right? Marketplace, um, okay. Uh, marketplace is actually a search tool that help thousands of learners, um, your learners, to find and enroll interesting courses. Like. So we also in open learning, we also have our own marketplace. You want to see one? Okay, let me show you. <laughs> okay, it's easy. If you open any browser, or right, any browser you like, I recommend uh, Google Chrome, and type openlearning.com, and then that's home page is basically our marketplace. Okay, if you scroll until down, you can see um, hundred of courses, like free um, courses, paid courses, uh, some are offered by university, some offered by institution, some from the private trainer. Okay, there's a thousand of, uh, there's a hundred and thousand of courses here from range from different field is uh, for you, for your learners to join, right? It also created by the course creator like yourself, okay? Uh, that uh, they create the course, they go through the same process like, uh, uh, like everyone else and then they manage to feature their course in the marketplace so for open cards micro credential also we have a uh, open cards marketplace okay it's easy to go there so first go to openlearning.com like this and then uh, if you come here you can see uh, there's an open cards button here okay, let me show highlight this part yes <laughs> so uh, click that and then we lead to the open cards section right uh, so here you can see also open grad courses, micro credential courses. Okay, which is so you can see we have a CS one hundred one programming and computational thinking. All right, um, uh, clear expedition offered by uh, uh, teach dot com OU, and you yourself also have a chance to be uh, to be have a chance to be featured in this uh, marketplace, la, your course to be featured in this uh, marketplace. There's a chance. So the only thing you need to do is um, go through my other session workshop series and then uh, complete all the activity, uh, create your open cards, everything, and then uh, uh, make sure you submit, uh, make sure you have everything ready. La. So it can be done, all right? So 
we can see a couple of courses are uh, the but to be featured in this marketplace there are a couple of things that uh, you need to do right uh, you need to fulfill a uh, certain criteria okay uh, we only list courses in our marketplace if they pass our course quality review process uh, this is actually uh, to ensure that your open crack courses fulfill our uh, open crack criteria and also to make sure that your learners uh, have the best learning experience in open learning okay we don't have uh, incomplete costs in the marketplace right so we have a team here that we will uh, where we will go through your open crest uh, using a predefined criteria and then uh, if let's say anything you need an amendment, we will give you feedback, then you need to make that amendment and you uh, have to, uh, then we will, after everything is okay, we will feature in this marketplace, all right? After you turn your course online, lah, all right? So, so how to do that? How to send that uh, to the feature, okay? All right, but before you do that, before I show you how to do that, there's a one thing that I want you to do. I want I'm totally recommend people to do is uh, make sure you do your own review first before you send to us. Okay, uh, you do your own review using the criteria that we define, and then make sure everything's there. Then you send to us for review because it it save a lot of time. So you probably ask, uh, where's the criteria? All right, yeah, I share the criteria here, the cost quality review document here. Yeah? You just need to click this document, and then it will lead to this document right okay so uh you can can you see the screen so this is a cost quality uh checklist all right where you can see there's a couple of criteria yeah what is the learning your your upper care must have learning outcome your care must have modules must have content resources it must have active learning activities that produce a learning artifact and you also have a course on page and all this important thing so make sure that um you have to go through this all these criteria do your own review hey is it my open credits app all this thing or not then only you send to us for review because then you can save a lot of time right all right okay now let's say you already done this one then how to send you probably are okay Shandu, how are you going to need to send for your team to review it's very easy very simple process let me show you okay first um go to your own course Right, go to your own course where uh, your open crack course. All right, yeah. On the left tab here, yeah, you can you see the left tab? And then if you scroll down, you will see course setup, administrator learner assessment, and credit sure. There's a four tab, right? And then click uh, course setup, and then uh, make sure you click setup wizard, right? Okay. Let me highlight that part. Okay, I'm going to close this. All right, this is what we call a setup wizard. Basically, it also have the same checklist I just showed you. Okay, you also can double check here. And then if you once you're done, you can click done, done, done. Um, then uh, once you are happy with all this thing, you make sure you're okay, ready. So what you can do is you click step three here, and then you click request to be listed, right? So when you click this part, it will send us, uh, uh, a request to our team, and then we, uh, I'm going to cancel now. Okay. So, you will send a request to our team so as to us review the uh, your open track cost. All right. Um, so, what we review is using the same cost quality document that I just showed you earlier. There's no other document besides that. So, uh, this review process normally has take to five business day. Um, um, so if you need any elements, you need any improvement, we will definitely will send you a feedback. Lah. So once let's say you have completed the, all this amendment, right? And um, you can resubmit again for other review. And then we then everything is okay. What we will do next is we will enable the digital credential or accredible uh, open credits, uh, credential system in your open credit course. We will enable that. All right, and you will uh, get some sort of like a uh, patch, say this is an open cost, it's some sort of recognition. So we will enable that part. 
uh, so we will enable the credential as well as a, a, a statement. Let's say this is open cost. Um, that which you can use that to uh, to manage uh, issue. Uh, also design uh, your open, uh, your digital certificate. So okay. and uh, so that's the part that I'm going to show earlier. But before you do that, always remember the key takeaway. Do this first. All right. Make sure uh, you send. Uh, make sure you uh, after your open cards or calls already. Make sure you review it your own first using the document I just shared. And then you send us for review. Then we will definitely there will be a couple of uh, ongoing email with us. And then you do the amendment. And then if all okay, we will enable the digital credential system in your open cards. Course is basically we look. You can see the part is here, only here, right? You can see the credential, and then it will appear here, lah. So, um, so that's that's the part. So make sure you do that, okay? Okay. Let's go back to the next part. I'm gonna go to the next part here. So click uh, session two, right? Okay. And then I'm gonna go to the next one, digital credential. Okay. This is our next part that I want to cover. Okay. We already I already show you how to. Uh, how to send for cost a marketplace? What is marketplace and how to how to feature your open care in the marketplace? What are the steps that you need to do in order to feature it? So next is let's say all okay, everything done. Then next is what? Just you you can continue set up the digital creation, right? Right. That's actually main focus for our today's session. Okay. What is actually a digital credential, right? All okay. right. So. Think about this. Every time when people say micro credential, one of the things is automatically come in our mind is badges, right? Uh, digital badges where people can share everywhere, right? Something very nice and fancy. Yeah. So that is actually uh, one of the most uh, kind of little bit uh, uh, important thing. All right. So people know this as a certificate or badges, sometimes learners share this uh, credential on LinkedIn or other social networks, okay? Um, so nowadays, the employee can verify the badge through that, uh, some sort of unique ID and checking with issuer or credential. Uh, some, since the advent of the blockchain, things getting more secure nowadays. You probably heard about blockchains, right? Blockchains make the digital verification system more secure. So um, that is also one of the best things that have happened. So Open Learning has its own uh, digital credential system that allow you to issue both badges and certificate. Uh, the, uh, the best part is uh, we just also recently partnered with Accredible to bring a very secure and a very fast certificate uh, to all our learners. So uh, high probably if you, uh, you know, if you, let's say, uh, join our previous session, uh, the one uh, conducted by uh, Sarina yeah? <laughs> from Academia. So she, I think she showed a couple of interesting uh, things about uh, how you can design, uh, issue, and manage the certificate. And so some of the, benef uh, I think, the benefits, right? So yeah, same thing. There are a lot of benefits uh, using this accredible uh, digital credit system because um, one thing is it's always online. So you don't need to worry about uh, losing it, right? So it's always online. It's a cloud base. Uh, so you can have a, if you have a URL, you can access it anytime, right? Um, that's the one best part. And so you can easily shareable in the internet world. Um, you can share on Facebook, LinkedIn, and and also, there, so you also can control the privacy of it, right? Uh, you can look at it. Um, um, you can make this thing, is this searchable or you don't want to be searchable? And you also can print it anytime if you want in the PDF. Um, you also can verify anytime if you want to, right? Is it, if let's say your employer want to verify, it, hey, is this uh, credential is, uh, really belong to you? I want to verify it. Ah, then you can share the verification uh, toolkit. With them, uh, this is my ID. You can verify in this page. Uh, you can share it, and also, um, uh, yes, yeah, so kind of a little bit, also, uh, uh, kind of a little bit. Uh, how to say it? Um, 
com compatible. Uh, it also designed a, a same like a Mozilla Open Badges. If you heard about Mozilla Open Badges, pretty much same thing, right? Um, so if you want to learn more, uh, please visit the uh, resource hub to learn more about this partnership. You can click the link here, right? Okay, to, uh, if you want to learn more. So that's pretty much about Accredible, right? Okay, now uh, I think uh, you already know Accredible, all right? Uh, let's find out how to configure this accreditation, all right? So let's move on to the next session. All right? Yes, patch or certificate or both, right? That's our big question that people always ask. Should I use patch? Should I use a certificate or why not both? Right. Yes. Can I just jump in? Can I be greedy and have both? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why not both? <laughs> right. So yeah. you don't have. You don't need to choose. You can have both. Um, normally, when we talk about the uh, digital credential, right, uh, you normally come with the uh, uh, um, uh, badges or certificates. That's I think normally uh, people will ask lah. But the big question people ask: When I do badges? When I need to use badges? When I need to use certificate? I think that pretty much answers totally up to you. Okay. Uh, I think because uh, let's say um, you want people to share, you want your learner to share widely in the social media, then use a patch, right? Create a patch so they can share in the social media, everything. They also love to, uh, uh, they also can uh, put it nicely in their portfolio, right? Um, then if you let's say you want to add some information, further information, like uh, you want to add some name, issue date, expiry date, and more information, more attribute, then use a certificate, right? But why need to choose? So I say go design both. So what you can do, the learner can do is, if what the learner can do is they can share their batch in the social network, and then people click the batch will lead to the certificate. All right, or to their portfolio, right? So they can view the overall certificate and everything. So the badges can be used for share with the wider audience safely. So that's one of the best thing that I can think of, right? The, uh, that in this uh, that you can utilize, right? So don't uh, it also can be some of the value added advantages you can offer to your learner, right? That people will. Uh, when you offer something like this, people will definitely will come and take your online course right? because you give them uh, varieties, right? To uh, chance to uh, expand their portfolio, right? All right. So what other things is um, I want to a little bit cover is a little bit about batch. The, what is the metadata that always this batch scary? So if you look at this, all these patches, it's not just like a pretty picture, not like a thing it's like that. It's actually inside the batch, it carry a data something we call it metadata. Okay, it contains data like a patch name, so patch criteria, patch URL, issue date, uh, issue organization, all this information. And you can add this all this information if you want to in the attributes. So um, kind of it will be awesome, okay? the thing that we can do nowadays, right? With this all these micro credential things and everything, right? Yeah. So uh, the the thing is, and um, after that, you also no need to uh, configure all the design all these pages yourself. Okay, um, the best thing in when it comes to the open cred is um, you don't need to uh, complete any site of uh, setup in the, your institution setting, right? Or design your all this uh, open cred page yourself. We will do that for you. Okay, you only need to provide your institutional logo, uh, what type of information you want to be in your certificate and all this information. Uh, we will design for you and make things appear for you to choose from the library and then set it up and configure it a little bit and then it's ready for issue, all right? So what we make things easier for you is uh, to do all these things. Right? So, uh, so don't worry about uh, go to the accredible site, you need to design all this part, okay? So we, we will do that part for you, right? Okay, um, next, um, okay, let's say you already done, right? Um, you already, we already, let's say we already designed the, uh, you already give us the institution logo, you already send all the details and we already designed for you that. And then let's say next is you need to configure it. That's the part I'm gonna show next, 
how to do that configurations. It, the, the part is very simple, right? For that, I'm going to open my, uh, my another demo course. Yeah. All right. Uh, where is it? The share page. In share. Okay. Okay, I think it's sorry. <laughs> all right. Okay, so uh, this is one course that I'm currently testing out with the, all the this system. Okay, so I'll, to configure this course is pretty much ready, right? Um, uh, the, the we already configure the uh, batch. We are uh, we already designed the batch. We already designed the uh, certificate in equitable design system. So pretty much what you can do is you can see all the uh, templates here. So how to uh, configure that? It's very simple. Uh, go to your own course, any course, and then if you look at this left tab here, hey, let me show where. Okay, can you see my mouse? Yeah, click it. So you will see this part credential, right? Okay, let me close this credential, and then click that. Yeah, and then you will see setup appearance issuance. Uh, issue credentials, right? Okay, click setup, okay, which is I'm currently here in, under the setup. So this is a credential setup page. This is the first thing you need to do. Okay, so if you look at this here, this is a credential type is actually open credit certificate or batch. We are credible. It's already been enabled. Okay, um, if you haven't go through the cost review process I mentioned earlier, right? Uh, if let's say your course is not passed as open credit course, then you probably won't see this. Okay, so you need to uh, you need to have uh, you need to pass that first course review. Your course need to pass as open credit course, then only we, we enable this part. So after it's all done, enable you can see like this credential type open credit certificate of batch via accredited, right? Uh, so here you can type your display name required, effective communication of business success, is the course name, uh, some description, uh, website required is, uh, this is the course website, right, which is this one, okay, uh, sorry, the course URL, <laughs> yeah, uh, so what is mean website is actually here, so this is a URL, so you need to paste the URL, um, then price, is it free or paid, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna go with for free because I already charged my micro credential during enrollment. I don't want to charge people again. Okay, that's like uh, killing people, right? So I'm gonna go for free. And then this part is automated issue credential on completion of the course. Yeah, okay, this is actually quite important part. You need to think uh, this is part is very important when it comes to the issuance time, all right? So there's a two section here. You want to issue automatically uh, yes or no, okay? If, uh, if you click yes, then people will get the certificate after the course got 100% completion after they, so if you look at this uh, top right here, yeah, you can see your progress, right? So when the student get 100%, the automatic, the certificate will be automatically issued if you click yes. If you click no, then you can award them manually, the certificate. Let's say you want to, no, 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 I want to see the work. I want to see the artifact, learning artifact. I want to see the work, then only I want the award. Then you click no. So uh, then uh, just type in that, what is the certificate pending message? There's a already default message for you here. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna give it all this. I'm happy with this. Certificate award message, congratulations, you've been awarded, blah, 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 <laughs> right? So uh, you can, uh, Type in, make sure you fill in all this thing and then click save, right? So you need to do this first, right? And then next is you need to configure the certificate, right? Click appearance. Okay, so far everyone can follow? Okay, yeah, please push, all right? So you will lead to this page, right? So you can see there's a quick guide for you, all right? Yeah, one thing I love of open learning here, yeah? is there's always have a help page good guy for you in the top right even like in, in all the pages right but you go and look at it all the course of time so learner they always have a quick guide videos and everything for you so you are you you, you always be, you, you are covered <laughs> right so uh don't worry 
so you can also get take a look at this short guide how to set up if you want to and then uh there's an info here all right okay design for open credit type credential preset and provided by open learning that's the one i'm saying that we will design the open credits uh certificate and patches for you and after we design it it will appear here for you on you only need to choose from so here is we can like uh, certificate and badges make sure you choose right All right this is one i love it right, that's one i'm going to choose this and then i'm going to click use design and then badge also same thing uh i already created a badge which people already created uh this is my test badge <laughs> so yeah i'm going to use stick with this all right and then um this one is also there's an info page Okay, the information provided in the field below only display on the certificate, which is a signature. You need to also have the signature here. All right. Uh, signatures are 200 times 60 pixels. All right. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not going to add any signature. I'm just going to leave it. I'm happy with this. Uh, and then just add some teacher information, Balasanda, Lady Design and Trainer. And then you can add more information if you want to. All right. And then put your full name here, all right, with the titles, if any. And then make that click save right and then pretty much you already set up your uh credentials right how easy is this right we make this so easy so for you to do it. next is you just need to issue and then we read from student point of view like i will show you later okay so viewing is very simple uh let me show the house is totally view like yeah so it's basically will look like this in full setting after issue you can see there's a logo certificate completion balasanda balakrishnan effective communication issue and date uh this is our open cards uh classifications learning hours and also a type of learning which is automatically will be appear in open learning so uh if you attend my uh my previous session on the thursday right Thursday, uh, which is a little bit explain based what is open credit framework, what is the criteria of open credits. I did explain this part. And if you want to create open credits, you have the specific criteria that you must fulfill. Uh, so all these things, the badges will automatically will be coming here. If your open credits is industry recognized uh, under the uh, industry, uh, under the professional learning, and uh, let's say it's a four hours of learning. So you know, we know it set up that the setup is automatically will be come here. So then, yeah, I also can certificate. Yeah, this is the set uh, badges. Woohoo, the ID power by opening. Andrew so, has comment. I love the look at the, of the certificates and the badges. It looks so nice. Yeah, yeah, it's so clean, right? <laughs> yes, it makes me want to get one as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Also, so. This is how you configure your credential, digital credential, right? So it's very simple, uh, very straightforward. Mm, and okay, so now is a little bit. Um, now let's say you already like um, configure. So what is next? Next, I'm going to show you a little bit things like how to issue, how to verify, and how some of the students view like, where the student can view their get the certificate, which uh after you issue it so let's go through the other other things all right so if you have any questions so far the one that i cover uh again i remind uh please post in the q a box there and if you have anything to say you can say in the chat box all right and also uh if you if you like sitting for long make sure you also stand up and do some as minor exercise like you can do the minor exercise just by sitting here like how, how i do it right so make sure you do some uh, scratch up, you know, make things loose a little bit, you know, uh, rest your high a little bit. Uh, don't, don't, go to, don't go to sleep, okay? All right. Uh, and then relax for a while, uh, do some scratching. And then, uh, so we, I'm going to go to the next session uh, in a couple of, in one minute. So, so let's do that. All right. Do some uh, minor, uh, do some exercise, yeah? You can do it by sitting. Okay. Uh, Kim, you have any idea how to do some exercise by sitting? Do um, think of anything? Chandru, <laughs> yeah. 
you yeah. just spoke, you just spoke what is uh, what is on my mind you know we sit for long hours long crazy hours all the time especially under the lockdown yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like uh if i sit for long periods run right and uh, the next day you know it's, uh, it just feels like something else i just yeah. need to run and take a walk in a park or something yeah. uh, i think uh, if it's we are stuck in a chair or you know at the desk uh, what i'll usually do is i'll just do some simple stretching um, yeah. Go, you know, take a go for a drink, of water or something. Make a coffee. Mm. Eat a snack. Grab something from the kitchen. Steal from yeah. the kitchen. Yeah. So that that's actually a good idea, right? So now I don't want anyone to go. I'm afraid later people won't come back. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. So, uh, do some minor scratching, sitting. All right. Maybe you can do uh like uh uh you know, open and closing your eye, you know, and uh, move your hands like this, you know, and then uh, make things comfortable a little bit, okay? All right. I think uh, we can continue now, all right, in our exercise. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next session is I'm going to show a little bit about how to issue, okay? All right, let's recap on what we have done so far, right? what we have covered. So, to show you uh, how to, uh, I'll show you a little bit about marketplace and then uh, what is marketplace, why you need to have a feature, some process on behind it, then uh, how you can configure the digital credential, right? Certificate and badges. Uh, next is issue, right? Let's say it's your, after your course go online, right? The students all go online, then you probably need to know how to issue it. Okay, let's look at the, some of the things. Okay, all right. Okay, so, oh, sorry, I, I just got a minor electric shot in my PC. Okay, all right. Um, actually, um, issuing uh, OpenCAD credential, uh, you can that either automatically or manually. Okay, I already say that last time so. But first, you need to choose that op option in the credential setup. Lah. Just like I showed earlier, remember the one in the open credit uh, credential. Um, when you go to the click credential setup, you will see this page where you ask you to choose automatically issue credential on the completion of the cost. Right? Either you have to click yes or no. Okay, this is where you need to. This whatever you choose here is the one that uh, decide how you're gonna issue your my uh, digital credential. So if you click yes, again. Okay, uh, st student will automatically will receive the certificate or badges uh, and badges after they receive 100% completion, cost completion. Yeah, in the top right here, this is a progress bar. So after they get 100%, they will automatically will get the certificate. So if you click no, then you can award them manually, right? You can give them manual, uh, award them manually. So how to do that? Right. So some people have a different way. I prefer to do it manually uh, if I have a case because uh, one of the thing is I want to see how what does the student do, what is the learning artifact, the thing that they do. Probably you want to assess it. Uh, uh, you want to release the uh, if you uh, uh, integrate if you use our, our outcome based assessment feature. Probably you want to mark it first before you issue the credential. Right. So so there's a few things probably you want to do. Setting check their learning artifact, see if they already done everything okay or not. Are you satisfied with the, their learning artifact? Marking, if you want to do mark, then go ahead, mark first. Then everything is okay, then you manually find the student and issue them. So it's very simple to do that issue, uh, right? So in order to do that, just go to the credential, then click issue credential. Right. Okay. So not this. So you can see a couple of uh, courses already being uh, ready to issue. All right. So let me open this one. Mm, my sample. Okay. Issue credential. Right. So you can see uh, I already give some of letter the credential. Right, so uh, this is how you issue it. So you just need to click the name, find the name, all right, and then uh, you also can filter it if you want to know. Okay, credential pending, 
Okay. Uh, need to complete the course. I think pretty much everyone, right? And credentials who I already issue. Okay, I think I already issue for a few. And then all. Okay. So if you find the student and then click issue and you will uh, you issue the certificate and also the uh, uh, patches. So it's pretty much a sample all go in the same time. So it's very easy, very simple, and also very straightforward. Okay, there's no uh, um, trick here. Okay, so once you issue, student will get the um, email from um, uh, operating or credible notifying that they receive uh, a batch, right? So that's one way they can uh, view the batch. Um, they also, what they can do is they also can click their progress bar to go to the my progress page so i'm going to open i'm going to show uh, my course uh, my student course view all right to show that a uh, new share right okay so it's look is it look small key oh can you see it it looks okay for me it looks all right, all right. yeah okay but it looks smaller for yeah. me. all right Okay, yeah, let me okay. Uh, look okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So what one way you can do that is um you go to the course. Um sorry, Chandru. Uh, yeah. Now it looks <laughs> now you can just enlarge a little bit because after you change screen, it kind of you know um uh, went down a bit in size. Maybe just enlarge right. it a little bit. All right, yep. okay, okay, I do that. I do that. Maybe under 50 sounds good. Yeah. Okay, this looks good. This look good? All right, also. Yes. So okay. one of the things, uh, okay, let's where I leave it, yeah? So yeah, where your students can view the certificate or um, the badge after you issue it, right? Number one, they will receive an email. The number two is they can go to the My Progress page. Where's the My Progress page? You probably ask, where's the My Progress page? So if you look at the, if you look at this course, the open track course, if you look at the top right here, your progress, so you only need to click that, right? It will lead to the My Progress page, right? This is the My Progress page. You can see a couple of information already here, like uh, the progress of the course currently is a zero, all right? <laughs> this is a, some simple test here. So uh, yeah, you have information like outcome, and you can see the certification has been awarded, right? Because I already awarded this one. And you can want to view the credential, they can click this one, right? And then it will lead to the accredible uh, open cards open learning page. Uh, right? You can see the link is actually opencardsopenlearning.com where the student can uh, verify, get more information about the credential, right? So that's a one way uh, they can uh, do it, okay? All right, so they also can view uh, uh, they also what can they do is they can also uh, do a lot of things here. Like if you look at this part, uh, you can look, you can scroll between your credential and also batch, right? This is pretty much your wallet, something like a thing. Uh, then you also can do, there's a lot of sharing options here for you to do. And then uh, this is pretty much see my name, issue a website. Hey, I also can verify here. Oh, how awesome is this, right? And also share your achievement. Hmm, amazing, right? So, so th this is where one way to do that, right? In order, student can view their portfolio. The second way, uh, second, uh, the third way, right, is actually they also can go to their open learning portfolio and view their certificate. So, how to do? Uh, one way to do that is actually. Um, um, Go to your own open track course. Okay, this is a blocking my view. Okay, on the top right here, can you see on the top right? There's a few icons. I'm gonna let me highlight the part. And then you can see uh credentials, right? Click for me credentials and voila. So this is where. So they, this is their credential part, their, their portfolio, and also under the credentials, you can see the certificate is already there. So there's a certificate here, which is cool. There's a patch here. 
under the batch section and then if i click view credential so lead to the same page <laughs> right so that's one way uh, people can one way people can view la, right um, yeah so that's that's a, how your student can view the certificate right so the next one i'm going to need to be show is verification people always ask uh, let's say if my employer want to verify uh how we gonna uh, how we uh do that right um so i'm going to show how we can verify the certificate right it's very simple very straightforward and with that also we make things very easy for you and also for your learner okay if your learner want to send to their potential employer to verification it's also very easy right so first number one is you need to go to their course okay and then find the id right their certificate id mostly the certificate id will be here Okay, you need to copy this here. Okay, one way you can verify here, same thing. All right. Uh, the second way is uh, you need to copy this uh, verification ID. I think I'm just going to do it here in my portfolio. It's much more easier. Yeah. So, which is this one? All right. Okay, you can see I copy my ID. And then uh, scroll. Uh, you can go to the openlearning.com, scroll until end until you see the footer section right so uh, this is the open learning footer section and then you can see this part is called a uh, verifier certificate click that all right also credential verification part so uh, this is where the, your learner can verify their certificate so what they can do is they can copy paste their id here right and then click verify and then there you go certificate id is valid effective communication business success okay all right i need to change that and you should date a credible system and yeah use credential on a credible then you will lead to the same page that we uh saw earlier right all right so this is how you can do that one way you can verify the set uh your certificate you can your learner can verify so uh, if you let's say set up an uh, expiry date in your um verification let's say you um then uh that also will be mentioned uh, but currently there's no uh expiry date in my certificate so that should be okay okay all right all right so i think that's part pretty much uh cover the part is for this session is I cover a little bit on uh, how to uh, issue, how to uh, student view, all right, uh, where they can get the certificate, where uh, which part, and also how to verify it, right? Okay, so with that done, right? Digital credential, right? Um, now you already set the digital credential, right? Um, do you think? This alone will be enough for learner to showcase for the for the new skill or competency, right? Do you think this credential is alone is enough, right? Um, for learners to um, for us to know their is it they really fulfill the outcome? Is it they really showcase the competency? What give this credential more value, right? What what are the things that give us more value, right? So that's the part that we're going to a little bit talk a little bit. I'm going to show it in the next session. So uh, let's move on to the next session. I'm going to share my screen, move on to the different screen. Okay. Wait, I'm sharing. All right. Okay, so let's move on to the next session. Is little bit I want to talk a little bit about the portfolio. So um I really talk a little bit about the digital credential for this session, right? Um, which is really good. Okay. Uh, if you look at the micro credential, digital credential is one of the like important things. People, like I say, when you talk about, when we think about micro credential, automatically people will think, hey, batches and all these things. 
But one thing is uh, unique about open credit is we make things a little bit, we are, I, I'm proud to say that we are unique. The reason is uh, we only don't have a lot of people to issue a certificate, tradition, everything, but we want to give more value on it. We want to people to showcase more than just their credential, just their certificate, just their mesh, right? What is the best, what is the thing that speak a lot more than a credential? Than uh, like a certificate of patch is their learning artifact, which is uh, their portfolio, right? Their portfolio uh, list out of all their learning uh, evidence from the courses. So that speaks a lot. That part is one of the most important thing in uh, when it comes to the lifelong learning, right? Your portfolio. So whatever you learn is whatever your student learn. Sorry, is they can compile all the learning evidence in their portfolio. So when you offer your micro credential program to your students, so you can proudly say, upon finishing this micro credential, not only you will receive a credential, uh, which is a badge or thing, you also have to showcase your learning artifact or learning evidence to your potential employer, right? And that will also will be listed in their portfolio automatically, right? So how cool is that, right? How cool is that? Besides that, if you recall, uh, one of the thing, important thing, the open credits uh, criteria, like I mentioned the, in, even in my last session in the Thursday um, on the 18th, is you must, your learner must produce a learning artifact showcasing that they are uh, fulfilling the learning outcome as well as um, the learning uh, the uh, fulfill uh, or showcase all the required skills that you promised they will master. So the best way to see that is through the learning artifact. Okay, um, I think um, I think previous session, if you look at the Shaliza and um, if you join our previous session, uh, where the Shaliza and Alena, okay, my fellow colleague, uh, so from Open Learning, they show you how to do, how to create an engaging activities that allow you to create that uh, uh, high quality learning artifact, right? Okay, one way to do that is through learning activities. Okay, uh, people, students do the activities, they share, they contribute, they reflect on it, and then they actively do, and then only they're able to produce a learning, meaningful learning artifact that link to the cost learning outcome, right? You also have all the most important engaging elements, right? So that's the learning artifact. So that learning artifact is, if you, let's say you already create open credit, pretty much you already have that. Imagine if also you allow your learner to show that as well, along with the digital credential, as well as the badges. So that is really amazing. I would say that is really a mind blowing and also one of the most, um, I probably say it's a revolutionary idea and one of the things that open learning really take, um, something that I'm also proud to say we are unique in that part, right? Um, so that open learning portfolio, okay, let me show my portfolio, yeah? Okay, I'm gonna show my portfolio here, right? Same thing, yeah, cool. All right, this is my uh, learner profile. Actually, I have two open learning account, one for my work and one for my personal, okay? So I always do that because uh, personal one is for me to learning. In the same time, I also collect my all my learning evidence, build up my portfolio. So in the future, I can use that portfolio to advance my career and everything. So even when you have work, you can still learn and build up your portfolio slowly in open learning. Uh, when you take the micro credential program, your learner take the micro credential, they can also can build up the portfolio slowly and build up everything uh, along with their digital credential as well, the learning artifact. So this is my portfolio. You see someone and some familiar, there we go. And then um, the name, copy link. Okay, so you can see, I already show all my certificate that I complete. This is a list of the certificate program courses that I already complete, 100%. I already got the certificate ready, badges, achievement, right? Um, so, and now is if you click this one portfolio, you can see uh, this is my learning evidence. Okay, this is a, a, a 
a collection of my learning activities, things that I share in the learning activities throughout all the courses that I joined as a learner, all right? Uh, you can see I can filter by course as well. Okay, let's say I only want to see learning evidence from the Internet of Things course. You click that and pretty much, oh, only share one, all right? And one of the courses like uh, showcase uh, interest to ecotourism, okay? Uh, this is a program courses that I, this is all the learning evidence uh, from that particular course. All right, you can see people can see. So along the credential, people also can see the learning artifact evidence. You can see how the thing is accumulated in my portfolio, right? How cool is this? So I think pretty much the last session also Shalida share about this. So whatever engaging activity you create for your learner, for your learner to do, it won't go waste. You will all accumulated here in the online portfolio, right? So um, this open learning portfolio for me is actually uh, is generate the learning evidence of actually uh, what the learner did to meet the outcome lah, or develop the skill, yeah, right? So kind of a little bit in open learning, you can view all these things both at the same time. So no problem here. Uh, all right. So uh, you one thing is you must enable you also can enable and disable the portfolio feature at the, in your own course if you want to. Let me show that part as well quickly. But uh, I'm strongly recommend you to don't do that. <laughs> if you create a uh, open credits uh, course by default, uh, the portfolio feature already been enabled. So your learner when they submit uh, do anything in your activity automatically will go to their portfolio. But um, one thing is, I always recommend you to uh, double check if it's enable or not. Okay, I always recommend you to go and double check anyway. Don't disable it because it's give a lot of advantage to your students. But if you want to disable still, I think it's totally up to you lah, because you are the cost creator, you are the owner. Um, it's totally up to your decision. But uh, my my point of view is is good to uh, have enable. So. Uh, Let's go to, uh, in order to see the portfolio setting, enable and disable. So go to the course setup. Okay, all right, here. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, then click general. Then scroll until you see the portfolio setting here. Okay, you can see, right? Portfolio setting. When a student made the post inside the class should be added to their portfolio automatically. Yes, immediately after posting, never added automatically, or yes, after this date. Okay, you also have option to configure that. But either way, I always recommend to have this feature enabled to make sure that all the collection evidence um, to be uh, accumulated in their portfolio. It gives uh, more value to the students work, to the students' credential, besides that uh, digital credential, right? Okay, if any question, whatever I just cover until now, um, please uh, post in the Q&A box, right? And I'm gonna a little bit, uh, okay, make sure you share, put in the Q&A box here. Okay, yes, any questions so far? Oh, we have a few questions. Uh, yeah. I think we can cover after the end of the session, yeah? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Okay. All right. Let's, if you know nothing, let's move on to the next session. It's a little bit, I mean, want to cover a little bit about the pre-flight check. Okay. Uh, what is pre-flight check? Okay. Uh, let's look at the some of the things. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna click and move on to the next topic. I'm gonna to click this uh, session four again. Then, yeah. Okay, pre-flight check. Uh, people always ask, what is pre-flight check? Okay, uh, remember when you like uh, launching anything you do uh, before you launching any end product or uh, do anything, you normally test it. Right, see if everything is the way it is, is meant to be. If is there everything work as it's meant to be, is there anything wrong? Uh, something like that. So, same like in the flight, before the flight take off, uh, people normal people they always do some pre flight check, right? For the pilot, 
and that's a guy in the app front side. So all everyone do some checking, see if everything okay, got fuel or not. Um, before the takeout, what will happen if flight takeout without doing a pre-flight check? Right? Yeah, it's 50-50 lah, right? Uh, anyway, you can, you can the thing can go wrong. So uh, it's totally 50-50. But it's always recommended to do that in order to avoid that 50-50 chances to for the flight to get uh, in mess in order to 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 in trouble to get in trouble so that this part is very important i would say it may sound simple but for me it's kind of a little bit it's one of the most important things it's something that we cost creator should not overlook right uh, i always recommend all cost creators please do this if you feel like your cost is uh, ready okay imagine your cost is ready you've done everything uh, you put your learning of course, you put your cost contents, activities, you already beautify your cost, put the banner there, done everything, you already sent for cost review, give 100 to 100 from our team. And then uh, it's like, uh, then what I always recommend is after you've done everything, set up the credential, do your own free flight check. Maybe you can ask your team member, someone in your team, maybe someone who's not involved in this cost development project. Hey, can you like go in as a student? You can like a test, a test course, test class, and then go as a student, do some testing, the instruction clear or not. Um, uh, when you post, is it people are get posted or is it like gallery working or not? All this pre flight check. You need to do that. So it's very easy. I mean, you probably want to ask Chandru, Chandru, yeah, that's actually a good idea, but how are you going to do that? Right? Uh, if you have any suggestion, uh, how are you going to do that? Yeah, it's very easy, right? Uh, so what you can do is you can use uh, this document that I have here to do that check. Okay, so it's actually very simple pre-flight check. Uh, there's a couple of criteria here. Like you can see, are there any links broken? Is there any text referred to the link, but isn't hyperlinked? Uh, is there any broken image? Uh, activity instruction makes sense or not? All these things are very basic things that I strongly advise you to uh, do the check before you launch your open cards, before you make your open cards online for enrollment or this thing. So this is kind of very important. Okay, don't overlook this part. Um, that um, because it say you will in future it will save a lot of your time and also sometimes without you realizing um, make you better, right? So remember when you do this kind of check, when you amend it, um, when you come to the second project, third project, fourth project, you will get a family with it. You will, uh, things will be easy for you, right? That's how I actually, how I learned, right? I didn't learn everything in one shot. So I make a mistake. So uh, then I sent to other people like uh, my, my colleague, everyone, they will do a check and then they will say this part is missing. So. When I do the second time, when I do a, real, a second project and everything, I will keep this in my mind. I have to do this. So the this thing will help you to get better. So it's not like an extra thing. So I strongly advise you to do this. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, you can find this uh, document in this course, yeah? All right? So, yeah. So besides that, what's next? You probably ask uh, what's really next. So you already like uh, said, uh, I think you pretty much your your opercats is ready to go online, right? You imagine you have the opercats already passed the free flight check. Everything's done. You are happy. Is next is just turn your opercats online. So a feature in open learning marketplace, right? So uh, how to do that? It's very simple. Uh, go to the cost setup and then click general, and you only need to turn. The cost online. That's it. All right. And um, you make things easier. Uh, so you can see this one is a general. And you can see uh, there's a cost status here. Right. And currently it's online. Okay. I can make it offline, online here just by clicking a simple button here. So if I click offline, you, you, you can't access this workshop course. You probably say uh, your course is not available. So uh, currently it's online. So make sure after everything is done, make sure you go to your 
upon cat cost make it online right so there you go it's done okay all right okay so that's pretty much i think we already cover most of the thing okay we almost uh, end of the time came to take a look at the, some of the question. I think I'm just gonna, gonna hand over to my click. Kim. Okay. Kim. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's Thank look you. at the some of the questions, Kim. I think it's good we can uh, tackle some of the questions. All right. Um, Thank you uh, for the insightful presentation. I definitely learned a lot today. Yeah. Um, uh, about open credits, about a credible, um, and I think it's um. It's, it's just amazing. It's so user-friendly and simple to do, you know, to configure and to do things, to get things going, uh, to get certificates. And we know, we have learned that um, as um, course creators can refer to the course quality review document to look at the checklist uh, of the criteria. And we have a credible badges and certificates to award learners to show for the, the achievements. And, um, and very importantly, Chandru informs us that uh, we need to do pre-flight checks before we actually fly, right? Setting the course to go live. Um, so uh, let's, uh, yes, Chandra, let's take a look at some of the questions from the participants. Yeah, um, let, me, let me turn off my sharing, yeah? Wait. Um, yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to look at the, some of the questions. I think we have a couple of questions. All right. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Actually, um, you, uh, it's, you, it's actually good to ask questions because when you ask questions, uh, we also learn from that. Um, uh, some of the questions, it's probably we need to double check with the credible system. Okay, we need to do some tests before answer to you, right? So that's why uh, I totally recommend if you have anything to ask, please ask because it also help us to create um, knowledge bank. Okay, some of the things that we may miss you probably want it, okay? You probably remember it. So ask the question. Even if we cannot have uh, answer now, you will let's say we want to do some test to confirm, maybe you want to uh, double check with credible on that part, but we will definitely will come back to you on the post uh, email after we double check. So that indirectly also help us to explain our knowledge as well. So feel free, uh, don't stop you from asking question because um, th that will help us, uh, that really help me and so my team a lot because I'm also currently compiling a uh, type of question for the accredible that people will normally ask some of the things that I even notice. Okay. Okay. Yes, fellow participants, feel uh, please feel free to drop your questions. And I, I fully agree with Chandru. We we learn a lot from asking questions. We welcome questions and uh, and uh, you know even is uh, when I teach I tell the students um, do ask questions. Don't keep quiet. Um, because yeah. that's when we learn new things and yeah, no crazy questions, right? Yeah. So, um, Chandru, um, so there are a few questions in the Q&A box. All right. Okay, um, okay let's look at the first question here. Yeah? Right. Chandru, shall I launch the poll in the meantime we'll look at the questions? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at this. Okay. I just need some time. Uh, one... All right. Okay, while Chandra is looking at the questions, uh, you know, so we can give him a chance to look at the questions. Uh, we have a poll for you, right, uh, to participate in. Do you think my uh, digital credentials will be widely recognized and accepted in Malaysia in the near future? What are your thoughts? Yes. Yeah, you know, in those days we, we have a lot of certificates and I remember, you know, the resume file is like a, it's thick with all sorts of paper certificates. And now we have digital badges and certificates. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I, also, panelists cannot vote, yeah? All right, so, okay. Yeah, Chandra, take it away. Uh, yeah, all right. Can I hide this? All right. 
Okay, while you're voting, I think I'm gonna let's answer a couple of questions. Let's look at the, some of the questions. Yeah. Okay, first, uh, let's look at for my uh, uh, for my shita with certificate and batches of micro cracks. Uh, micro cracks should be shown on each learner on op each learner of open learning. Uh, can the learner choose to privatize the credential with OL? All right. Uh, so one thing is we have this um, open learning. Uh, portfolio or planning uh, profile, right? So what, what you can do is you have options to make your profile hidden if you want to. Let's say you want to only show to yourself, right? Or you want to show it only to the learner in the planning circle, or you want to show to the rest of the world, right? So you can do that if you want to. Uh, there's a way to do that. Let me show, open my... Uh, Okay, I'm gonna open my cam. Ah, oh, where's my share screen? Right. Okay, luckily I haven't closed this part. Okay, this is my own um, learner profile, right? So you can see here. So what I can do is currently, uh, anyone in the world can see my portfolio. Right, my credential, uh, my portfolio evidence and everything. So you, you can further restrict it if you want to, right? So one way you can do that is actually in the course setup. Can I, when I click this one, I click on setting, yeah. Okay, you can see uh, profile privacy or portfolio privacy, right? Yeah, there's a two section here. So you can change the profile and portfolio privacy here, right? So currently, if you set up the profile privacy, uh, your profile page is viewable by anybody in Open Learning. Yeah, anybody, anybody in course, anybody in Open Learning, all right? And profile change profile only me. Okay, so you have a couple of portfolio and profile privacy you can customize. Okay, uh, so feel free to do that. Okay, but now only way, only one you can do this is the learner themselves. So educators cannot do this. Okay, educators is can't access their students profile setting. Okay, only the learner can do this settings. Okay, only they can choose either they want to make their profile, their uh, uh, portfolio privacy or not. So educators can, you can do it for your own uh, portfolio, but not for your learner portfolio, right? All right. That's address the question. If it's not addressing the question, please let me know. Yeah. Thank you, Chandru. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna close this sharing. Awesome. Okay. What is the next question? Uh, from attendees. Any tips on creating badges that can help to motivate learners to continue on their learning progress? Yes. Actually, I can think a couple of ideas. You can do that. Um. Okay, one of the way is I can think is um, using a gamification mechanics or game mechanics. If you want, if you take a look at the nowadays trends, yeah, um, just look at our e-wallet, right? Our game. Nowadays, when I just finish uh, something in the my touch and go e-wallet, and suddenly I got a badge, say that I already complete this milestone, and then I got some cashback. So. Uh, when I look at it, well, that's one way they use the game mechanics, gamification elements in order to motivate people to spend more, <laughs> right? So uh, that, besides that, also this feature, also some people also already have that in the Xbox. If you look, if you play games like a um, PlayStation, everything. If you finish, a, if you play a game, let's say you shoot ten zombies in uh, without reloading you get a batch right it's like uh, awarding your gamers when they're completing certain tasks you can see even games do that in order to do that because they want the learners keep the, the gamers to become a better they want to motivate the gamers to shoot the zombies better right so uh, they so after the uh, the gamer become a, a great zombie shooter they get a batch right Try to apply, what, what if you can apply the same idea in, uh, in your course? This is where you can apply the gamification mechanics in your course. So beside this uh, credible uh, system that we have, 
uh, that batch system. We also have our own uh, batch system. Okay, I didn't cover that part here, but I'm love to show that here. Okay, so what you can do now, you can use that batch, our own open learning batch system. You can create a batch, and then you can create multiple batch for your markets. Active learner, active contributor. Um, you can name any name you want, right? And then when the student completes certain tasks in your course, let's say that student is very active, and then it's like keep on go helping other students. And then you can, what you can do is uh, we, we, you can give them a batch like a future teacher, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Imagine how students will feel when they see the batch, right? Oh my God, I just retrieved a future teacher batch from this course. That would be really helpful. Besides that, the main digital credential, that would be very awesome. Okay? So you can do that. So it's very simple to do that. You can create batch, this kind of like a batch in Open Learning. Um, let me show you how. I'm gonna go back to my share screen. Yeah, click share. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, Chandru. Awesome. Cost promotion. All right. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna click cost setup, yeah? Oh, sorry. Um, Call setup here, yeah. and then you click community. See the name, the community, right? So this is where you can uh, click that okay, to build the more community. Um, call setup community, and then yeah, this is where you create that batch. Here we call this uh, achievement, right? This achievement also will be uh, showcased in the learner's portfolio as well. Uh, so what you can do is, is you can create a batch. Uh, I call it achievement. Let's stick with the name achievement here. You can create an achievement. Say active. Oh, sorry, I'm using the wrong keyboard. <laughs> active uh, learner. Right? Okay. Or maybe active contributor. Okay. This is batch we can give to the learner that contribute. Uh, a lot to your, uh, high, uh, to your students, uh, like giving a lot of contribution, go helping others, sharing a lot of learning resources, and also uh, answer some query. So uh, you can like uh, give some name, right? And then you can click image. And then what you can do is there's a two way. You can create a new achievement, which is uh, that one is creating from scratch, right? So this is pretty much like you should like, uh, uh, total control and then uh, add some disk. And then what you can do is I'm going to show a little bit. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Back to upload. All right. So I'm just going to show from the library here. I'm just going to choose from here. I'm going to choose this uh, Superman. Okay. Descriptions. All right. So I uh, can. Uh, type the description like why you are what this batch to your learner, right? Uh, so uh, then you, what you can do is type this batch forwarded because you are very uh, nice, you are very good student, and so I uh, do this, this, this. So that's why. <laughs> so uh, I thought you can write down this, and then you also can choose how you want to award this achievement to your, that student. Do you want uh, award manually, which you have to click the student name and then award it? based on the kudos mean uh, okay probably some of you don't know what kudos mean um, so kudos okay which is uh, can you see my mouse pro yeah kudos currently my kudos is say zero content zero comment so every time you contribute anything and people like you will get one kudos okay not you like yeah you not you like your own context other people like your own context so you will get one kudos so um, it's totally, if let's say you are very high contributor, then probably you have a lot of kudos. Lah. So you also can say, if the student is a high active contributor, right? So let's give this. If a student receives 10 kudos, okay, I'm going to put this one, 10 kudos, automatically this student will receive active contributor wish. Okay, I'm going to put, sorry, put that. Right? Oh, sorry. Uh, so, that will be uh, one way. And other way you can do it, you also can award based on the cost completion. 
if you want to this patch but this patch is active contributor right uh, this is where you need to use uh, like your own sense lab. so what is the best um, award method for this type of batch for me is kudos is uh, making more sense compared to award the manually or uh, on cost complexion if let's say i want to award manually probably i will look at the active facilitated i will create a batch called active facilitator i'll go see the student manually how they facilitate the thing then i want to award them manually cost completion you probably want to create a different batch or something like that so totally up to you you want to do it so you can award this kind of batch. you can create this kind of batch and award your student to motivate them all right uh, in order to take control of their learning they also be happy to have this collect all these badges so they can showcase with the other learner so but uh, make sure you consistent with don't create a lot of achievement uh don't like uh, create like 10 20 and then give like tons of batches so make sure that um you stick with like one or two or uh, two or three right not too much uh, because the student later will focus on collecting the batch not the learning itself so you have to be very balanced here yeah? right so that's my advice here so yeah that's one way we can do that okay any and tips I, kim yeah, yeah and there's also a help page uh, on uh, badges, uh, there's a help page on how do I create an achievement badge for my course. So uh, that's a uh, that's a reference point of reference as well. If uh, as you create your badge, you have any uh, questions, you're not sure, uh, we have a help page on that as well. Um, Chandra, there's a question from Vivian. Um, oh. So in other words, is Open Cred um, Open Learning's platform of micro credentials courses? It's OpenCAD's open learning platform. In other words, it's OpenCAD. Yeah, it's actually uh, OpenCAD. It's actually open learning brand of microcredition. Okay, nowadays for the past, uh, I think for five years, all the big, big organizations come out with their own terms when it comes to the microcredition. FutureLearn, they come out with their own term for the microcredential. They also come out with their own criteria to define microcredential, which is uh, they only add on. They not remove anything, just add on some criteria. So, and edX, yeah, and then all of this, I think big players start to uh, and come out with their own terms. So, same thing in open learning. So, when you create um, a micro credential, like uh, in open learning, yeah, you can create your own micro credential without creating open cards uh, framework, which is you totally fine. I think uh, US and done, done that. But if you create uh, open cards, then you need to that particular open cards need to fulfill our open cards framework criteria requirements right so that in order to be classified as an open cards so pretty much yeah is um, uh, is open learning not only a platform for micro credential courses i would say it's actually open learning for um, platform for all type of courses <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you also can offer uh, micro credential courses uh, in a, uh, in open learning, lah, correct? Yeah. Okay. Chandru, just to share with everyone, just now we have a poll question. Um, do you think micro uh, digital credentials will be widely recognized and accepted in Malaysia? Um, we'll to share with everyone. We have the answers from the poll now. Um, mm -hmm. Majority. Um, uh, responded that yes, digital mm. credentials is the way to go in future. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's quite interesting because um, I think uh, people are, are starting to accept that you know the digital, digital credentials. This is a new way ahead. So that's pretty interesting that you know the acceptance level is there. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's the thing, right? Awesome. Uh, I, I'm so happy seeing this response. So people are very positive in these changes. Uh, that means we have, uh, we, already, uh, we only need to bring people on board. That's why we have an amazing team here to help the, getting the people on board, right? <laughs> All right. So is there any other questions? Yeah, we have, ah, is it accredible batching system available for all education providers on Polony? Well, wow, that's actually very good. Thank you for the question, Mashita. Yes. Okay. Currently, the accredible badging system only available for the open cards cost creator, micro credential. Now, automatically, if you create a cost in open learning or open cards, automatically it's available for you. So, uh, like I say, um, but 
requirement is it must pass the cost quality review process right uh, so that's the requirement once we've done that we will end up with the credible credential feature for you to uh, set up configure it properly and issue it uh, that is for open crack cost but if you want to have this feature let's say uh, uh, like uh, something that you want to have extra for you hey this feature is amazing but i don't want to maybe you don't want to use for other project like a degree program or a diploma program uh, that you want to do it open learning you want to have this incredible uh, feature yes we love to set up for you we can help you set up this incredible feature in your institution so uh, if you want to have more information on that part i think um feel free to contact our uh, marketing team uh, so, sorry <laughs> sales team uh or drop an email we would love to set up a session with you uh to go through on that part more all right uh, yeah it's actually uh, always remember is uh kind of little bit add-on service with the fees yeah extra fees we will integrate for you but still need to pay it <laughs> right but if you want more information you want to learn more please uh, contact us yeah awesome Okay. Anything? Uh, do you have any other question? Why so less question today? <laughs> All right, it's okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Probably yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Tackle like the questions, Chandru. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I think that's only uh the questions that we have today. I think if there's no other question, I think we can uh end okay. the session. So uh, shall I wrap up the session then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, fellow participants, uh, everyone, uh, we hope that this session has been beneficial for you. Uh, you have gained a lot from it. You have learned about open credits, uh, the cost quality criteria, and all the whole of information that Chandru just shared with us. Thank you so much, Chandru. And uh, we'd like uh, to say thank you so much for joining and for your active participation in the, today's session's activities. And it's been awesome to have you with us today. So, um, Stay tuned for the next Open Cred Symposium sessions. We have a few more sessions and, uh, uh, and uh, until Thursday. Um, in the mm. meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at myleaningservices uh, at openlearning.com if you have any questions. Um, yeah. We also have another poll question for you. Uh, if you'd like to join our educator community, um, we have an educator newsletter. Um, mm. Feel free to join the poll and uh, we'll get you signed up. Uh, on the newsletter, all right? Yeah. Yes. So um, if there are no further questions, um, we'll officially end today's uh, session. This session, um, wish you a great day and see you in the course. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, I, and first of all, also thank you for everyone that joined this session. I know you spend, uh, you come and um, spend, because it's not easy joining this session, you spend your time and then your energy to sit here for hours, <laughs> listen to me, and um, that really meaningful to me. And also I want to say thank you for my backstage team that really helped me and doing things for me uh, from backstage. Their name is, uh, they're like hidden hero for me. They're the one who manage everything, like team like uh, Erica, um, Sophia, and uh, so uh, also fellow members from my LD department, Mashita, uh, Alena, <laughs> Shaliza. <laughs> uh, everyone is helping me from backstage. So thank you so much for making things, uh, helping me out, and so answering questions, also facilitating questions, and also great. So uh, please join the workshop course, right? Um, and then uh, start designing your open cards, all right? There's no excuse anymore. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna have a final session for that series on December, okay? So um, so go join the course and then I will let let you guys know uh, in, the, in the announcement section. So the we, because we are currently coming up with, the, we're planning to develop more resources for you, but we also need more engagement from your side in order to do that. So again, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, I think we finished a little bit earlier. <laughs> but yeah. I think we covered the contents. Uh, you have covered the contents quite well, Chandru. Uh, yeah, all right. So much has been shared today. And uh, the platform is just amazing. It's very flexible. It's easy to use. It's user-friendly. And 
um, we can just think of the many possibilities for you know for course creators to create uh, learning experiences and uh, you know digital badges and certificates for their learners. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank okay. you, Kim. Also, uh, this is a Kim first session, and I think well done. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.